Rise of Hawk, Part 3, Scene 23. Barnas stared down the telescopic sights at the large stone building below him. Between his position at the top of the sand dune and the walls of the building were the rebels. They were scattered behind various kinds of cover and taking fire from the building above them. Barna cleared the chamber of his sniper rifle and reloaded. Down the sights he saw a window, the glass already shattered from combat. A uniformed guard stood inside, trying to hide behind the metal framing while he fired at the rebels below him. Barna aimed, tightening his finger on the trigger, breathed in, and with the outbreath he fired. The figure in his sights hit the wall next to him, a bullet hole through his temple, and fell from view. Below Barna, the rebels fired at the building. They were giving the guards along the fence line and the top floor windows a lot of trouble. No one seemed to have been killed in the rebel ranks yet, but plenty of guards lay dead on the ground and inside the building. They seemed to be winning. Hawk certainly knew how to arrange for an effective distraction, Barna thought appreciatively. He only had a few more bullets left, and he wondered absently if the second team might need a backup. Carefully, he shuffled back down the dune out of sight and lifted the rifle across his shoulders. <clears throat> Scene break. Talon stood behind Orion and Asha as they struggled with the massive metal doors in front of them. He watched, dumbstruck, that any kinetic could be so strong to be able to bend two massive metal doors like they were heated plexiglass. There was a lot of swearing, and Tay had picked up enough to know that there was some kind of lock on the doors that neither of them could trigger. <clears throat> he sensed the fear of five young adults on the other side, but he also sensed that they were trying to help from their end. However, they didn't have all day to get the kids. At some point, if they couldn't get the doors open, they'd have to evacuate and leave the kids behind to save themselves. Something popped loudly, and sparks shot out from the top of one wall. Metal groaned under the kinetic pressure. <clears throat> Two giant gated doors pulled off their hinges and flew up into the air. Talon flinched as they both landed with a dull thud in the dunes behind him. There was a moment of silence. All shooting stopped, and five young adults ran towards them from the prison. Tay ran to meet them, as Asha and Orion withdrew back towards their escape point. The first one to reach them was a young woman. She was tall, with long blonde hair and very dark blue eyes. <clears throat> Tay sensed a strength to her and guessed that she was probably a high-rating genetic. Hurry, follow them, he gestured behind him with one arm. Barely glancing at him, she nodded and continued running. The other four followed her, but the last of them, a young dark-haired man, slowed as he approached. Are you Hawk? he asked. Taylor laughed. No, keep running. The dark-haired boy grinned at him and continued past. Gunfire sounded behind them, and Tay looked back at the prison. A man ran out of the building towards him with a number of guards in tow. Unable to believe what he saw, Talon stared in utter disbelief. Nathan? His face was far too harsh and angry to be the Nathan he knew. Besides that, Nathan was still in Aram healing up from being shot, right? Perhaps he had a twin brother. Tay, run! The sister's voice rang loudly in his mind. Glancing behind, she saw her standing on top of a sand dune, staring back at him. Tay's shock lifted just as a roar erupted from the guards behind him. He ran towards his sister, but a weapon fired. Just one shot. Something sharp bit him in the calf and he tripped, falling unceremoniously to the hot, dark sand. He tried to get up again, but one leg wouldn't take any weight. By the time he figured out that he'd been shot, the uniformed guards were upon him, kicking and punching. Stand down! Someone roared from very far away. Either a knee or an elbow hit him hard in the face. Stare stars filled his vision and the light of the sun seemed to darken and fade away. <clears throat> Scene break. Barna watched the guards beating Talon. He quickly reloaded and shimmied down to his stomach in the sand. By the time he was ready to shoot, the guards were dragging Talon, unconscious, back inside the building. The leader of the guards stepped aside to watch them, and Barna recognised him. Barna wouldn't have considered Talon a friend. It was hard to consider a man who helped to guard him as a prisoner a friend. However, he knew the man well enough after a year of captivity to know that Talon didn't deserve to be taken prisoner by the agency, and certainly not by Enigma. The youngest Cody would make 
Talon suffer significantly before he was taken to the interrogators. He framed Enigma's face in his rifle sights. Dovid Cody, the youngest son of Jaron Cody Sr. He hadn't been so bad in his youth. Dovid had been one of those defying his father for a long time and trying to bring a positive change into the agency. That was until first his mother killed herself, and then less than three months later a serial killer took his wife and their unborn child, and nearly killed him. After that, Dobird Cody became Enigma, vicious, cold-hearted, and the more likely heir to his father's throne than his older siblings, Gerard's new favourite. The fact that he was here in the desert meant that he'd escaped the agents, the rebels. It also meant that the agency probably knew now that Barna wasn't dead. He lined up the sights between Enigma's bright blue eyes and took a breath. If he killed him now, there would be less trouble later, because he would not be the next head of the agency. Barna breathed out and rested his finger on the trigger. He breathed in, and on the out-breath, someone kicked the rifle barrel up. The shot fired off target. Instinct drove Barna to grab his handgun from its holster. Rolling onto his back, he aimed it at the person before he'd even seen them. Terra stood above him, dark blue eyes stared tensely at his hands as his hands lifted into the air. Why? Barna growled. Why did you stop me? What do you think Jiran will do to the rebels if you shoot, shot his presence, precious son? <clears throat> you think he wouldn't want revenge on every single rebel in Irana? He already wants that, Barna smiled. Yes, but with his son's death, it would become personal and not just duty. You know Jiran as well as any other high-ranking agent. He's dangerous, even more so when he thinks he's being personally attacked. And he has three other sons of identical disposition. Killing Dovid would make it impossible for the rebels, instead of just extremely difficult. Do you want the deaths of two and a half thousand people on your heart? Shock forced the air from his lungs. Barna lowered his weapon. Two and a half thousand rebels? A laugh escaped Terrace. Yeah, isn't it amazing? Hawk may only be a man, but damn, he's impressive. Barna reholstered his gun. He grabbed the rifle from the sand and stood up. He sensed a deep relief in his cousin, which slowly shifted into sadness. Now, this rebel sees Usher as an extension of Hawk. Enigma's taken Talent, so he's going to need some support. Want to help? Barna smiled at his older cousin. Yes, I'll help, but not forever. With Dobid free, I have to go underground with Gusa. Of course, cousin. Of course. <clears throat> uh, scene 24, an hour late, later. Asha sat in the seats of a very dirty single propeller airplane. It was better than the transport on the way in, but not by much. Turbulence shook the cabin at odd times. Things rattled that shouldn't. And many of the rebels lay in the aisles because there weren't enough seats for them all. Despite the discomfort, it was better than walking back to Aram. Everybody had gotten out of the combat zone and evacuated on schedule. A number of those who had been fighting on the front of the building were injured, but no one had been lost. Except for Talon. Asha swallowed. Her brother hadn't run away like she'd instructed him. He stood there, frozen in shock, in the middle of a firefight, staring at Nathan. And so, of course, he got arrested and taken into custody. Not even Hawk could get him out now. At least not without revealing himself to the agency. Worse than that, Hawk would have to make sure Talon died before he left the initial non-telepathic interview process. Talon knew too much about the core rebel cell to be mentally eviscerated by the interrogators. He knew that she was Hawk's second and that the cathedral helped and traded with the rebels. He knew the locations of every rebel cell on Nama's supply run. Too many people would die if what he knew got to the agency. So Hawk would have to do what was necessary and sacrifice her brother to protect everyone else. Her bottom lip lifted and she closed her eyes. Rubbing them with her thumb and forefinger, she pushed back the tears. It would not do for the commander in the field to curl up in a ball and wail like a distraught child in front of all of these rebels. R.I. was sitting next to her, obviously involved in her own running thoughts and not noticing Asha's distress. The woman hadn't said anything since they'd watched Talon get arrested. Asha sensed her friend's terror and shock at seeing her youngest brother at, the, at that base. 
Hawke had told her that Arai would run if given any reason to do so. Seeing her brother, a man who was a clear and present threat to her, standing where he shouldn't be standing, was probably enough of a reason for her to flee. Arai sighed and up to, an ice blue eyes looked sideways at her. There has to be a spy in the rebels. The voice was quiet. I, I can't stay with you, Ash. I have to make sure my child is safe. Asha's bottom lip twitched. I know. She swallowed. At least let Hawk and I give you some resources to help you on your way. We have money put aside in one of the safe houses in Aral. Of course, Ash. She nodded once and got to her feet. Excuse me, I need the bathroom. Asha watched her walk down the aisle towards the back of the plane, and she wondered if she'd ever see her friend again after this. It wasn't safe on the run with without help from Hawk, especially not for the head's daughter. It would only be a matter of time before her best friend was caught and killed by the agency. Asha rubbed her eyes again. Those tears just wouldn't stay down. Scene break. <clears throat> the plane shook again and Zack gripped the armrests. He hated flying. He always had, even before the agency came to take him away. There was something unnatural to him about not having his feet planted on the earth. Although being on a plane meant he had escaped and he was now a rebel, so that was something, he grinned. <clears throat> At the front of the cabin sat the leader woman, whose name she, he'd already forgotten. She had long curly black hair and calm blue eyes. He sensed a strength to her that was familiar, that was similar to Liz. Whether that was because she was a kinetic or a leader, he wasn't sure. A shorter blonde woman was sitting next to her, but got up and made her way to the back of the cabin. Shuffling out of his seat, Zack headed towards the leader. When she turned to look at him, a shot of anxiety hit, and he promptly forgot what he wanted to say. Instead, he gave her a goofy gim grin. Hi. Hello. Her dark blue eyes were bloodshot and she looked tired, but she returned the smile. Zack, was it? Yeah, he nodded and sat down next to her, pulling one leg under him so he could sit sideways in the seat. Hawk said you're a fairly high rating time sign. He shrugged. I wouldn't know. Never been rated. She smiled and looked down. The sadness and worry came into her face again, and he remembered his question. That man who was captured, who is he? Her voice was very quiet. My brother Talon. Oh, he said awkwardly, realizing why she looked so cut up. But surely Hook, Hawk could help him. He got us out, didn't he? No, it's different, she shook her head. There isn't time to get him out, to get to him before he goes to the interrogators. You have to remember, Hawk is just a man. He can do the improbable, but not the impossible. She swallowed and looked at her hands. My brother is dead, Zack. That's all there is to it. Scene 25. <clears throat> the pain in Talon's right cheekbone was so intense that as he came to, a moan escaped his lips. Someone was pacing nearby and he felt flares of agita agitation and frustration prickle, prickle the air around him. Only one eye opened and as he got, as he tried to look up, the pain in his face and bound arms made him grunt. The other person in the room stepped towards him and a face swam into view. Vivid blue eyes glared angrily at him. Why didn't you run, Talon? He swallowed back the taste of blood in his mouth. I, I don't know. Maybe I thought you were in trouble. As you can see, I wasn't. Nathan stepped away and paced to the other side of the dim room where he stopped. The voice was quiet, like the Nathan Tay knew. I'm faced with a very difficult situation, Talon. Once you leave this room, you will go directly to telepath interrogators. Tay sensed a flare of grief in the younger man. I cannot let you leave here alive. You know too much. Talon glared. Too much about the rebels or too much about our agency spy? Nathan turned, and that odd one-sided smile of his brushed at the anger. Both. Then kill me, if that's what you're hinting at. No conflict there. Nathan strode up to him and crouched down to get eye contact. Why are you so eager to die? We both know I'm already dead, he swallowed. You kill me to protect yourself, and I will die protecting the rebels and Hawk from the agency. Ice blue eyes glanced down. There was a long silence in the room. <clears throat> Talon didn't sense anything other than Nathan's normal, stoic calm, but the frown on the man's face suggested he was thinking deeply about something. 
The man sighed, stood upright, and turned his back to Talon as he paced to the corner again. You die to protect the rebels from the agency, and I would kill you to protect myself. Fair point, Talon. Fair point. If only knew you knew the entire truth. Tay grunted. Then tell me. Nathan turned and strode swiftly towards him. His voice shifted to sound angry and harsh, but Tay didn't sense anything empathically. No. A fist came towards Tay and he was unable to avoid it. Agony shot through his cheekbone and jaw among a, a galaxy of stars. His last thought was of his sister, ten years old and weeping in his arms, the day the agency came for them, the last day either of them had been free.